morning, good evening, and welcome. Welcome to the Friday edition of the Angela Ray Show. Yes, we made it to the weekend, baby. Oh, it has been a great week here on the Angela Ray Show. This has been Boss Moves Week, and I've been so honored to interview some amazing people doing some phenomenal things in the community and throughout the country with their fabulous businesses. For those of you who will be catching the broadcast on the replay, thank you so much for checking out The Angela Ray Show. For all of my live viewers, you know what to do. Go ahead and slide in those comments. Let me know where you are watching the broadcast from on tonight. Be sure to share this broadcast with a friend. You know, again, I was talking about this week. We started off this week on Monday evening with Miss Rita Pardo of Pardo Naturals, who started her business because her daughter had eczema and she could not find the cream that would actually relieve her daughter of all of the itchiness and the pain that she was experiencing. And of course, once she stumbled on the gold of that body cream, she expanded her line and the rest, as they say, is history. On Tuesday night, we had the diva, Dr. Anika Goodwin with Opulence MD Beauty, who showed us how we can be spectacular with lush lashes. And she has an entire lash line, everything from very conservative lashes to the ultimate red carpet look. On Wednesday night, it was Donna King of P. Sherrod and Company, it has a handbag company based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And on last night, we had Miss Serrata Murphy. Serrata has expressions bracelets. Oh, and I'm, I was wearing a little bit of arm candy. I must, I took it off that fast. Oh, well, I don't know what I did with it. I was wearing it just a few minutes ago. I was on another, on a Zoom earlier. She also has a business called Serrata Speaks. And tonight we are rounding out this conversation on Boss Moves with the only gentleman on the team this week, Mr. Kevin Harrell. So as I said, whenever you get onto the broadcast, go ahead and do me a favor, slide into those comments. Let me know where you are broadcasting from. And we're going to get started as we always do at the top of the show with our Ray of Motivation moment. And for tonight's Ray of Motivation moment, I just want to ask, what kind of rumors are you starting? What kind of rumors are you starting? There was a song that was out. I, I don't know if it was 80s or 90s. I think the group was called Club Nouveau. And it was about rumors, like how rumors get started. How do rumors get started? It started by everyday people. And I know that there are rumors that unfortunately are, are not true. And sometimes they can really tear down a person's reputation but I'm talking about the, the good stuff that you spread. I mean, I feel like we have such an opportunity to spread good news, particularly in this time of a global pandemic where it may not seem that we get a lot of good news. And I'm really hinting towards how you are spreading the word about people's goods their products and their services, especially coming off this week of Boss Moves. If you've seen something on the Angela Ray show or on social media that looks like it's a great product or service, if you've ordered it, make sure that you help spread the word about what these phenomenally hardworking small business owners are doing. And that is your Ray of Motivation moment for this Friday edition of the Angela Ray show. Well, as I said, we have not had a gentleman on our show all week. I guess you could say we say the best for last. Kevin J. Harrell started his business after challenging himself to wear bow ties every day to class when he was working as an adjunct professor. Having a flair for style, he was looking for unique patterns and colors but did not find exactly what he was looking for. So he decided to make a few bow ties for himself, being completely self-taught, even borrowed his mom's sewing machine. And once he started wearing what he created, friends and family encouraged him to start selling those items and the rest, as they say, is history. Please help me welcome Kevin J. Harrell. Kevin, thank you so much for being on the Angela Ray Show tonight. Thank you for having me. I want to say first, um, I consider this a real honor to be on your show. 
I told you this before, and I don't know. I don't know if you remember, but um, of course, we went to college together at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And I don't know if you remember, but um, when I first arrived at UNC and was able to take part in um, some of the cultural offerings um, and uh, had a chance to see you perform as a part of Ebony Readers and Onyx Theater. <laughs> Um, Ooh, you I, back. <laughs> I went, I took it all the way back, I, but that really solidified for me that Carolina was where I needed to be. And there was a level of excellence that was unapologetically black that really let me know this is where I need to be. And these people aren't playing. And I think that that just, I mean, your career itself just speaks to that, um, that excellence. So I really consider this a great honor to be on your show. And, um, Thank you. Thank you for having me. You are certainly welcome. Oh, that warms my heart. And you know, it. Um, I'm going to assume that that you maybe you were, had come to Project Uplift, or was that through Prio when you? I did. I attended Project Uplift. So yeah, that was probably okay. the first time that I saw you perform. Wow. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was literally somewhere in Chapel Hill after graduation. I don't know, three, four five years after graduation. And someone else kind of stopped me like on the street, like Rosemary Street and was like, you performed at Project Uplift. And I was like, OK. But, you know, um, and we are so digressing. However, I, I mean, I think that this is important because there may be someone watching who is trying to cons to figure out what school will work for you. I don't know if anybody's going in person this fall or not. So, you know, that that may be a moot point. <laughs> right. But I will say, um, honestly, Kevin, that was what solidified me attending Carolina was Project Uplift. And wow. particularly that Friday night event where mm -hmm. I got a chance to see uh, the sorority, uh, some of the sorority members step, um, saw some of the fraternities step. I saw people perform and it was like, just like you said, oh my gosh, there is a place for me. Carolina yes. can definitely be home. So shout out to uh, Dr. Archie Irvin, who was over yes. that program at that time. Uh, he is now uh, a little further south at uh, Georgia Tech, uh, still in the ACC, but at Georgia Tech. But that program, I I just it it really, I think, made a difference in a lot of people's lives. So for parents that are are watching, make sure when it's safe to go to the campus to visit, <laughs> take make sure your your kids, your students, your your children visit campus because it it you know you can't get it from a brochure. I mean, virtual tours right now, if that's all you can do, that's all you can do because of the pandemic. But when you can, make sure you visit campus. Absolutely. Hey, Josette, visit on the uh, broadcast from. Greensboro. So Kevin, I'm just curious, you know, I know that you started your business, you, you started making bow ties because you couldn't find exactly what you were looking for. But yes. prior to that, had you done any kind of sewing or any kind of design at all? So I have a funny story about that. Um, so I, I bought my house in 2006 and um, I'm, you know, pretty, pretty new in my career, um, trying to be frugal. I was like, I need to decorate this house. I had planned a, um, a housewarming and really left the, the walls bare. It was, wasn't even really decorated. I mean, that furnished that much. And I was like, I'm having this housewarming. I need to figure this out really like quickly. And my mother came and spent a week with me when I first, the first week I moved in and she brought her sewing machine and we, she made curtains for some, some rooms and we went shopping looking for fabric. And um, so I grew up with, a mother who was a seamstress and she used to make prom dresses and wedding gowns and all kinds of things. But um, I really just consider that noise as I was trying to watch TV and that sewing machine was making so much noise. Um, but when she came and spent that week with me, she brought a sewing machine and we looked everywhere for curtains for my living room. Couldn't find any. We started looking in fabric stores, couldn't find fabric. And at the end of the week, she said, I'm gonna leave the sewing machine here. And when you find the fabric you like, you make your own curtains. I hadn't sewn anything in my life. So, <laughs> so I thought, oh, she's just playing. So I, I found the fabric probably a week later online and it came and I said, ma, I found the fabric that I like. And she said, good, make your own curtains. And I was like, oh, okay. So she's serious. She's serious about this. She said, I left you a machine, make your own curtains. And I was just like, I don't know. So I put that fabric in the closet. 
it stayed there about three more months. And really it was, my friends are coming over for this housewarming. I need to do something. So I pulled the fabric out one Saturday and started cutting it. And I called my mom probably every five to 10 minutes. What do I, what do, I do now? The machine is doing this. The thread is bunching up. It's not sewing right. And she was able to walk me through that over the phone. Um, and that was the only thing that's, I, I sewed those curtains and some pillows, which I would argue now are probably about the easiest thing that you could make straight lines. And I put that sewing machine away until uh, this kind of renaissance of bow ties happened where everybody was wearing bow ties and it was just a big thing. And uh, I started looking for bow ties online and I ran across a blog site on uh, how to make your own bow tie. And I was like, I got a machine, maybe I could do this. And uh, so I tried it and made my first one. And uh, of course they were just for me to wear. So before that, no, I, I had, I, other than those curtains that I was forced to make <laughs> but, um, and those pillows, no, I, I hadn't sewn before. Um, and some people would say, oh, well, you grew up with the, with a mom who was, who was uh, in the house sewing, so you probably caught something, but I really didn't pay attention at all. I, it was of no interest to me at all um, until it was a necessity. Now, piggybacking off of that, do you think that even though you said you didn't pay attention, it was in your blood? And this is what I mean. Um, I, I want to say it's maybe Henry Louis Gates has a program on PBS. Yes. Who do you think you are? Where he traces back a lot of celebrities will trace back, you know, two, three, four generations. And some of these celebrities will find out that their great, great grandmother and grandfathers were doing the same things that they are doing now, even though they never met those people. Yes, funny story about that. I have a studio, um, I have a studio at Golden Bell Arts in, in Durham, uh, downtown Durham. And uh, when, before the pandemic, every third Friday, we would open up our studios um, as a part of the Durham Art Walk. And uh, someone came in one day and she looked at my last name and she was like, Harold, she was like, where's your family from? And I started to tell her where my family is from. And she said, I, I think we're related. And we have, um, I have an uncle who does leather craft and he sews and he has done this all his life. And we just started talking about how this person, like how we are related to each other down the line and how she has an uncle that whose last name is Harold or their last name is Harold. And he had been doing leather craft work and I never, I never met him. So I definitely believe that uh, that, that happens often um, where there's just, it's something that's just in your blood and, and it draws you to the things that you do and the things that you enjoy doing. It's kind of weird like that. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now, so you started just with, with bow ties initially and yeah. you made those because you wanted to have nice bow ties to wear to class. Were any of your students among your customers in the beginning? Yes. So um, actually, I would say that my students really pushed me to start a business because I would wear the bow ties that I, I made to class and my students would say, I like your bow tie. And I would say, thank you. I made it. And they would turn back around and say, what? You made it? Well, can you make me one? And I would say, no, no, I can't. Um, the pattern that I found online wasn't adjustable. It, you were supposed to take one of your bow ties that you know fits you and sew your bow tie so that it was permanently that length. Um, and I just kept thinking, no, these aren't, it's not adjustable. I'm not, no, I don't wanna get in the business of measuring people's necks and, um, <laughs> and it's, if it's the wrong size and having to go back and alter it. And I was like, no, no, I'm not. I just make them for myself. And so many students kept asking and asking that I said, maybe there's something to this. Maybe I should try to figure this out. And so I, I started trying to figure out how to make my own pattern so that it could be adjustable. And at that time, uh, the hardware, so there's an adjustable ribbon, um, which I could actually show you in a second, but there's an adjustable ribbon and there's some hardware. And that hardware, I was only able to find it online in China. And I think okay. I think they were maybe one or two cents each back then, but you had to buy like two or three thousand of them. Um, and 
now I wish I had done that because now they cost a whole lot more than that. But <laughs> but this is the ribbon, the adjustable ribbon that comes mm -hmm. from China and you sew this in and there's some metal hardware that hooks into there to that as well. Um, but um, yeah, so I figured out, I made my own patterns and figured out how to get these adjustable ribbons. Someone ended up selling them on eBay in lots of 50. And I was like, I can, I can commit to 50. I couldn't commit to two, two or 3,000. But um, I bought those and started making them adjustable and it just took off from there. The business took off from there. I had my first trunk show, uh, I believe trunk show in 2015 or so. And uh, I mean, nearly sold out. I was, I was floored at um, the, the level of support that I got. Um, and so I really could, could um, credit the start of the business to the students who really pushed me um, by asking me to make them bow ties. Um, and now I will also say that, um, that uh, I, I should also add that their style, the, the style of my students um, who would wear, before, you know, I would think I'm gonna dress up to wear a bow tie. And then students would have on jeans and a vest and a bow tie or jeans and a white shirt and a, and a bow tie. And so it really, um, it, it uh, pushed me to think about bow ties in, in less formal ways and how to get how to get fabric and patterns that were more casual that could be worn if you wanted to wear a bow tie every day. So I would credit students with kind of pushing me in that direction, definitely. So you're selling these bow ties and then you realize that even though the bow ties are for men, a lot of your customers are women buying bow ties for the men in their lives. So then you decided you were gonna create something for the ladies. Yes. How did you How did you go from stitching on some, some cloth for bow ties <laughs> to actually making bags? Yeah, so uh, as I was mentioning, I had this huge trunk show, um, downtown Durham, and uh, I would say probably 60 or 70% of my customers were women buying bow ties for men in their lives. And I, I may have had one or two women who were like, I'm going to wear this myself. But most of them were buying uh, bow ties for men in their lives. And I left there thinking, if I could get this kind of response from people who are buying something for somebody else, like what response would I get if I made something that women would want to buy for themselves? I left there and um, that weekend I ended up going to the Scrap Exchange, uh, a place here in Durham where any anything that you have left over after a project, whether that be a home project, a, a craft project, anything you have left over, you can take there and they'll take it and they sell it. And then they use that those funds to support um, charities, um, nonprofit organizations, um, municipalities and uh, services in the city. So I, I went there and they had leather and I said, oh, this, I could play around with this leather and, and just see what I can do. And I started out by making little coin purses and um, I embroidered on those coin purses, um, sorority symbols and um, some people just wanted flowers or things like that. And that kind of took off with, with the, um, the coin purses. And I was just like, okay, this is good, but I really, you know, the more I, um, explored it, the more I learned about leather craft. And I really realized that I needed a, another kind of machine if I really wanted to be serious about sewing leather. And so I went from this little, from a, a home embroidery machine to an industrial embroidery machine. I went from a home sewing machine to an industrial sewing machine. Um, and I would also say leather craft is pretty expensive, but I've had so much favor in this process of starting this business. Um, the, the embroidery machine that I have, the industrial one, um, I found it on OfferUp and I think they were, they were asking for $1,100 for it or something like that. It's, it's a $5,000 machine. They were asking $1,100 and I was going to a place in Raleigh and getting somebody, I was outsourcing all of my embroidery, most of my embroidery on leather at that time, um, heavy duty things, bigger things than I could do on a home machine. And I talked to the guy in that, for, from that service and he said, yeah, you should get it if you can get it at that price. And I offered them about half of that. And they came back and said, um, 
well, we don't really know if it works, and um, it's, but we do know that there are about $200 worth of accessories, so we'll take $200 for it. And those are the kinds of things that happened for me over and over again when I was starting the business. Um, the, the industrial sewing machine that I have, I found that on OfferUp as well. And um, at that time, I didn't have a big vehicle to be able to, to go get it. And so I was trying to figure out how am I going to rent a U-Haul van and go get this machine? And I um, was trying to coordinate with the guy and he was just like, oh, I'll just bring it to you. He delivered it. He delivered it to me, no charge. Um, and so those are the kinds of things that just happened for me over and over again early on. Um, and I know I've kind of gotten away from um, creating things specifically for women, but um, that's kind of how it started with just the embroidery part of it and the um, smaller coin purses. Um, and then that the, the doors just opened. It seemed like once I got really serious about the business um, to so many, so many blessings in, in terms of equipment and um, even leather that I've been able to find. So can we see some bags? Absolutely. So, <laughs> so I'll show, um, oh, it's a little bright, but um, this one is, I call it my uh, lemon wristlet. Um, oh, so that's the Beyonce wristlet, the lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> lemonade. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that one, that's a lemon, lemon wristlet. Um, and I like these half moon, that's what I call these half moon bags. I like that shape. And I really try to um, do shapes that maybe you wouldn't find otherwise. Um, mm -hmm. This one is the the patchwork um, that kind of harkens back to the 70s. Oh, yeah. With the leather patchwork um, takes a long time to do. But um, and I have a, had a tote, a big tote um, patchwork like this as well that sold immediately as soon as I posted it online. Um, oh, wow. I, I make the larger totes as well. Um, I see you showcasing those DST colors. <laughs> I see you. Oh, we got, where's my, uh, there is a, um, there's a Lady Fortitude. Um, oh, I don't know if you I've can see I've seen that one online. I've seen it online. Yeah. I do, yeah. and I've seen it online. I've seen it on your Instagram as well. Yeah. This one is, um, I call it my mailer tote. Because uh, it kind of the mm. first one I made, I made out of a shiny, um, a shiny silver metal that looked like those mailer totes that you can slide things in and pull the tab and close them and stick them in the mail. Um, so that shape kind of reminded me of those mailers. Yeah. Um, and so I, I just try to make things that have unique shapes um, and maybe some unique color combinations. This one is a smaller tote, but. Um, with a little a little pool closure. I try to think about different ways to close a bag, maybe than than what we've seen before, or a different shape or some different color combinations than what we've seen as well. Those are amazing. Now, uh, I was getting ready to ask you know how do you keep everything balanced because you you're still involved with education. I and am. so relating to your education, you have a question from a fellow Tar Heel who's a loyal viewer of the show. Okay, yes. Oh God. <laughs> My expert opinion on COVID-19. Okay. So huh. My expert opinion. So here's what I will say. Um, I will say that uh we, I feel like we are, I was talking with a, a, a colleague earlier today, I feel like we are, um, a well, I'll say a little bit beyond, but if we were, if we were to think back to the 80s and think back to where we were in terms of HIV and this, this new uh, infectious, infectious disease was out and it was killing people and we were trying to re really figure out where, you know, how is it being spread and how can we stop it? And I think we're, we're a little bit beyond where they were back then in that we kind of know how it's being spread. So we do, we know that it's being spread, it's droplets. Um, so, you know, wearing face masks, I actually didn't intend to <laughs> have this on camera today, but I do have my face mask here and I do wear them when I go out as well. Um, we know how it's being spread. We know how to stop it from being spread. So we know um, doing things like washing your hands regularly, not touching your face, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, 
Um, we know that when you wear your face mask, you're um, helping to protect others because you're keeping your droplets from getting into anyone else's eyes, nose, or mouth. And when other people do the same, they're helping to protect us. Um, you know, some people are now wearing wearing face shields. So we have a we have a great idea of how this is being spread. There are still some unknowns, um, and I, so I think if we do what we know to keep this um, infection down, to keep it from spreading to others, we will be better off. I think we will start to see um, our numbers decrease and match some of what we see in other places. I saw an article um, that said Barbados was down to zero cases um, and that they were going to soon start allowing uh, travel, uh, people to start traveling back into Barbados, to which my friends were like, I'm moving to Barbados. Um, but I think uh, what happened there was that they had leadership that recognized that people should be isolated if they have symptoms. So if you, ha if you have symptoms, stay home. Um, if you get really, really sick, then of course you should you should seek medical attention. But if you, you're starting to have symptoms, stay home, try not to be around other people. If we minimize um, large gatherings, um, and then when you have to go out like to the grocery store or to um, get services, whether those be auto care, whatever it might be, wearing your mask, washing your hands regularly. A lot of places, even here in our studios, downstairs at the entry point, we have, um, hand sanitizer there. They've even put in um, the door kicks so you can open the door with your foot so that people don't have to touch um, the, the door handles when you're leaving the, the bathrooms. Those are the kinds of things that we need to be focused on in terms of making sure that we're cleaning our hands, washing our hands regularly, that we're not touching our eyes, our nose, our face, and we're wearing masks. And those are the things that we know. Those are the things that we've kind of been told since the very beginning. Um, and, and when people do those things and they stay at home, we socially isolate, we will start to see the infections going down, the infection rates. So I think we just have to do what we know. It, it, it's not, wearing a mask, is, a mask is not political. <laughs> it is not an infringement of your um, civil rights. <laughs> so we just have to do, uh, you know, it, we have to do what we know. We have to think about others other than just ourselves. Um, and think about protecting the health of the public. That's really what public health is all about, protecting the health of the populations. We have to think more from a public health standpoint as opposed to, or and in addition to, not either or, but in addition to a personal health standpoint. Okay. Now, <laughs> back to your, no, it's, no, you know, this, it was timely because this is, you know, we, this is where we are. We are in the Absolutely. midst of a pandemic. What is your favorite currently, your favorite tie set and what's Ooh. your favorite bag right now? So I will say that my favorite tie set is I partnered with another artist um, by the name of Pam, Pam Bond. She's actually your soror. Um, Pam Bond Designs. I partnered with her and her studio used to be right across the hall from me. And I partnered with her. She was making masks and I was making bow ties and pocket squares. And so she said, hey, for Father's Day, let's get together and let's do a mask pocket square and bow tie set. And I, gosh, back in 2014, I think it was, I traveled to Europe and I went to um, Belgium. I went to Brussels and there was a fabric store there um, and they had um, this beautiful fabric, beautiful greenish blue tartan fabric that kind of reminded me of Burberry fabric. And so I gave her a piece of that to make a mask. And then I made the bow tie and the pocket square. And that is my, my favorite. I have personally, I have that. Uh, I made myself one of those uh, bow ties and pocket squares. I, I didn't make myself a mask from that, but I love that fabric. I think um, that people who sew and, and people who do leather craft, we tend to collect all kinds of fabric and all kinds of leather because it just speaks to us. It's something about the pattern. It's something about the texture. It's something about how soft the fabric is um, that just speaks to us. And so we, you know, anybody who sews, you, you'll know that they have boxes and boxes of fabric. Anyone who, <laughs> does, who does leather craft, they have all kinds of leather. Um, and so that's what really speaks to me in terms of the bow tie set. Um, in terms of a bag, uh, 
I will say right now, um, the probably the most popular, and it was definitely the most expensive bag I, I made was the patchwork tote. So it was a tote, um, probably about the size of the one, about the size of this one. So a pretty big mm -hmm. tote, yeah. but it but it was patchwork all over. And uh, it was patchwork all over, but just like this one, the handles were red. And um, the, the handles and everything, all the individual trim pieces were red. Or, or this, you know, this kind of dark red, and it had a, it had rolled handles, and um, that one I really took probably two or three weeks to make that because I wanted it to be, yeah, I really wanted it to be wow. special. I knew it was gonna be special, but um, I mean, it has brass purse feet, it has brass, um, all of the uh, metal hardware is brass. It had rolled handles. Um, it has a beautiful tweed lining inside with with leather pockets like that was the it is it it took the most time to make, but it was also the most expensive and and it sold immediately as soon as I posted it online. Um, it was gone someone and the lady didn't even live here. She lived in Georgia and she said, I got to have it. She was like, don't uh, sell it. To, what do I need to do to make sure you don't sell it to anybody else? Uh, <laughs> so. Um, and that one is on my Instagram. People can see um, that on my Instagram. I will also say I did a crossbody. So this whole, I think I'm, I may need to explore. I would say these are more maybe fall, um, fall mm. winter colors. I probably need to explore doing some patchwork and more spring summer colors as well. Um, but I will say that um, the crossbody that I did, um, my aunt called me and said and you know my, my family they never call me and say i gotta have something because you know they they don't expect the hookup but my aunt called me and was like i gotta have that <laughs> she was like how much is it i need it so i think i need to to do more of the patchwork um the that is a i, I mean i was born in the 70s it definitely you know reminds me of the 70s and reminds me of the the boots and the 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 trench coat that my mom had from the 70s in that leather patchwork. So I really like that, that, um, that pattern, that style or line, I could say, because I did a, a few pieces. In that. You've, your work has found its way to some celebrities, you know, Layla Hathaway, Cheryl Lee yeah. Ralph, Common, uh, Matthew Knowles, to name a few. How were you able to make those connections? So I, um, I am lucky in that working in higher ed, and I, I still teach, still work in higher ed, I'm lucky in that universities tend to have deeper, much deeper pockets than I do. And they <laughs> bring celebrities to town all the time. And uh, I, I will tell anybody, when you are, if you're gonna be around, um, anyone who could potentially push your business forward, don't hesitate to make contact with them. Um, you know, if you have to be a little pushy, if you have to ask some questions, if you have to talk to managers, whatever it is that you need to do um, to kind of get your name out there, I would say do it. So, um, you know, Layla Hathaway, Shirley Ralph, um, the, they were um, guests at the university that I teach for at North Carolina Central University. And um, I thought about it beforehand and said, hey, I know they're gonna be here. I'm, I may have an opportunity to meet with them. I need to make them something. And um, Common and Matthew Knowles were guests at the North Carolina Fatherhood Conference. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna sound like uh, I just have way too many jobs, but I also, <laughs> I also work part time at Wake County Human Services and through that job um, in doing parenting work and respite work with families, supporting families through that job. I was able to I've been able to go to the North Carolina Fatherhood Conference. Um, we didn't have it this year because of the pandemic, but I think the last four years or so I've been able to go. And um, when I knew Matthew, Matthew Knowles and Common were going to be there, I thought I need to make them a bow tie. I need to get a bow tie in their hands. And funny story, I arrived a little bit late to the fatherhood conference. And when I went, I I said to myself, I was like, I need to dress 
like I, I just wanted to dress up. I wanted to look like I could possibly be a conference speaker or a keynote speaker. I just wanted to dress up. So I walked into the conference a little bit late and there were there was a group of men in front of me and I hadn't really paid attention to who they were. And we all walked right past registration. So I'm in this conference, didn't stop at the registration table or anything because I, I really didn't even see the registration table. And I look up and it's Matthew Knowles and his entourage. Well, everybody just thought I was with him because of the way I was dressed. They just thought I was with him. So I just walked right up to Matthew Knowles and said, hey, my name is Kevin Harrell. I have a business. I make bow ties and accessories. And I made a bow tie for you. And I handed it to him. And he said, oh, tell me more about this business. And so that's how I got gave uh, him a bow tie. And then uh, we had a meet and greet with Common. And I just walked right up to him and gave him a bow tie as well. Now, I will say that uh, another one of my favorite bags is a bag that I made specifically for PJ Morton. Now, PJ Morton is one of my favorite performers right now. And I attended three concerts in one year <laughs> for PJ Morton. And two of those concerts, he had meet and greets and I was able to meet him. And I talked to, talked to him after uh, one concert and I just said, hey, I have this business. I make bow ties and leather goods and I really want to make you something. I was like, I don't know what yet, but you know, I want to make you something. How would I get it to you? And he said, oh, here's my manager. Let me introduce you to my manager, get his contact information. And um, he was scheduled to have another concert here in April and I was going. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I need to get started on this bag because I'm going to see him again and I'm going to give him this bag. Well, of course it got canceled. Um, he actually had a birthday, I believe at the end of March. And so I just reached out to his manager and said, hey, I have this idea for a bag for PJ Morton. Um, how do I get it to him? And so he gave me the address and I made the bag and I, I didn't post it anywhere. I just kind of held on to it and I mailed it to him. And he got when he, as soon as he got the bag, he posted it on his social media. And I, I got a lot of a lot more followers and people contacted me asking me if I can make them a bag with. Well, the bag that I made for him had his face on it. It, it had a caricature of him and his uh, his tour logo embroidered on it. And so I've had people ask me, hey, can you put my face on it? Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm actually working on that for some people now working on um, embroidering their face on a bag, which I think it's such a unique thing that you never really get to see. Um, so I don't, they, they don't really want their names on it because, you know, it's, <laughs> they don't want to be down, walking down the street and somebody calling them by name. But um, so I think I'm hopeful that that will even push, you know, open a new door um, of something that I can do that maybe we don't see, we're not seeing people doing out there right now. But um, that bag is really special. I wish I was able to keep it. <laughs> I do have pictures of it though, but I can't keep it and have PJ Morton have it. So I guess it's better that he have it, but uh, he did post it on his social media and uh, his wife was holding it. And so I think uh, that was very special to me. I had friends who saw it before I did and they sent it, they were sending it to me all day, um, which was awesome. Now you've talked about having some extreme favor as you have been growing <laughs> and expanding your business, but you know, businesses are also, that journey is also filled with challenges. Talk a little bit about how you've been able to overcome some of the challenges that have come your way as well. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I would say probably one of the biggest challenges is what's happening right now with uh, this pandemic. A lot of uh, what we do in terms of small businesses is very dependent on uh, local markets. So being able to get out and talk to people and, and really promote yourself and talk about your, so people are buying your personality just as much as they're buying your product. So get, being able to get out and touch people and hug people and show people your work and explain, you know, what it is that you put into it, what, you know, this zipper, why this zipper is a higher qual quality than other zippers or why having a lining that is suede or leather might be more, uh, durable than having a lining that is cloth or, you know, those are the kinds of things that um, I think any good business person um, has to do, whether you like it or not, you have to do that. You, can, you have to get out there and do those kinds of things. But when we have this pandemic, you kind of have to pivot and you have to think about how am I going to market my business 
in another way? How am I going to still have that personal touch when I can't touch, <laughs> when I can't get out and and hug somebody or talk to somebody face to face? And so I think right now is probably the biggest challenge of the business, just trying to figure out how can I improve my my online presence? Um, how can I improve my website so that people still feel that personal touch? Um, how can I make sure that I'm engaging with the people who have purchased from me before? Because we know it's a lot easier to get someone to who has purchased from you before to purchase again than it is to convert someone to a customer who has never bought from from you before. So, um, you know, those are the kinds of things I'm having to think about a lot now. Um, rather than relying on having our doors open for third Fridays here or being able to do like the African-American cult cultural festival in downtown Raleigh or the many other festivals that may happen, you know, across North Carolina or even in other uh, neighboring states, uh, which is where I probably do most of my business. So that that's the biggest, that's one of the biggest challenges. And I think you just always have to think about how you pivot and how you um, adapt to change because change is inevitable. Um, and we just adapt to it. We make changes. And I think that's the important, uh, the important lesson maybe that even this COVID-19, um, pandemic has taught us. Definitely. Now, obviously, uh, when you're in a small business, you definitely appreciate purchases. That's, that's what keeps the lights on. What are other ways that people can support you and other small business owners? Absolutely. Um, so I think uh, just like if you were to make a purchase from some large retailer, um, sharing with people your positive experience, um, whether that be so sharing with your networks, your positive experience, um, showing off what it is that you have purchased um, and letting other people know where they can get it. I think, um, you know, and trusting this is the other thing, trusting that we're not going to make an exact replica of what you purchased for someone else. Um, so you don't have to worry, you know, when you when you're supporting small businesses, I think, you know, you don't have to worry about someone having the exact same thing that you have, especially if you were involved in customizing that. So if you've been in and that's another beauty of work, working with small businesses is that you could come and have a consultation with me and we can talk about um, how you like this bag, but you want something slightly different. You want something the way you want it. And we and so that's the beauty. Uh, but sharing with people um, your experience, um, definitely on social media. I think uh, we we love when people are sharing on social media um, the, their purchases, or even if it's something that they really like. Um, very often I have people who will say, um, I can't afford to buy that right now, but I want to. But they will be some of the biggest supporters in, in posting when I post something that they really like, they'll post it, they'll, you know, repost it. Um, and so I think that kind of support is, is great. Um, of course, purchases on our you know website, you can purchase directly from me. Um, I am still meeting with people by appointment. Of course, we're, you know, practicing social distancing and wearing masks and all those things and, uh, hopefully, uh, minimizing, uh, the contact that we have in, in, in doing so. Um, but I think those are, you know, some of the biggest ways that um, that they can support. And I think also I would encourage other um, small business owners and especially black businesses to support each other as well um, and share information uh, about others. Um, I had, you know, no no reservation about sharing that I partnered with Pam Bond Designs uh, to to make um, mask. Um, I think just you know, just not being, there's enough out here for all of us. And so, uh, and knowing what is for you is for you. So don't be afraid to share somebody else's uh, business and their work. Um, I think, you know, those are the, that, that's a bit of advice I, I would give in terms of, you know, that support, even sharing other opportunities to vend. So if there is a, you know, I've had plenty of people say, Hey, the city of Durham is looking for people to make masks. Here's a link if you want to be listed as a, um, you know, a vendor. Those are the kinds of things that are really, really helpful. I'm not assuming that I know about all of the possible opportunities um, that there are to sell, um, but you know, telling me, you know, if, it, if you enjoy my work and you think others might as well, sharing with me, you know, where there may be other opportunities to set up a table, set up a booth, and sell. 
Um, all those things are really helpful. Well, I know you mentioned that you are still doing consultations and you know wearing your mask and uh, keeping that social distance appropriate when you're meeting, but are you doing consultations virtually now? I absolutely will do uh, consultations virtually. I actually had someone reach out to me about uh, wanting to have something made and I made that, uh, that option available. Um, and the person was like, oh yeah, let's do virtual then. And so I, absolutely, you don't necessarily have to come in if you have an idea. Um, you know, I, I am able to do the consultation virtually. I'm able to take payment um, through PayPal, through all of the, <laughs> all of the, the, uh, uh, Merchant. You know how to get your coins. <laughs> I know how to get the coin. I know how to collect the coin. <laughs> no. Absolutely. All right. Well, we have. I have uh, Kevin's uh, Instagram as well as his website. Uh, scrolling at the bottom of the page, you know, it is July. However, before you know it, the holidays will be right upon you. And so, to know that you can get something customized. You know, I'm not, you know, he might put you on that payment plan if you start right now, if you want to, you know, something really big. But yeah, make sure that you check out his Instagram as well as his website. Do you have any final thoughts as we begin to wrap up? I, I don't want to take up too much of your time tonight. Oh, I just thank you again for this opportunity. Um, this, again, is huge for me. Um, so I really, really appreciate it. Um, again, yeah, people can. Follow me on Instagram at KJH Bowties. I have a Twitter as well. Um, I uh, have a website also that you uh, noted. Um, so definitely uh, you can join my fashion squad on my website. Um, and so if you join the fashion squad, you can be the first to know about new things that I have going on. So I may send out an email here or there. Um, I'm not the, the type of uh, business to worry you to death with a, an email every day or every week. Um, but I may send out an email to let you know I'm going to be somewhere or that there may be an opportunity um, that has come up that you may want to take advantage of um, in terms of supporting the business. So if you go to my website and join the fashion squad, um, then you can receive emails from me uh, about news that comes up regarding my business. Awesome. The I love that. The fashion squad. It, it, that just started to, to make my, my wheels turn like, oh, well, what can my people be? You got the fashion squad. Who can my be? Maybe you can help me come up with that. You know, people love, <laughs> they love a name. You got to have a name. Yeah. <laughs> they love I mean, the, the name. The right. You got the fashion squad. So, yeah. <laughs> you have my wheels turning right about now. So, yes. People, well, people love so to be much. a part of something. So, they do. You're right. Yes. That's that's on what is it? Uh, uh, Maslow's hierarchy. Um, yes. That needs to belong. So yeah. absolutely, absolutely, you are definitely right. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks so much for hanging out with us tonight. Thank you. I really appreciate it. All right. Have a good one. All right. You too. Stay safe. Thank you. We'll do. All right. All right. That is it for this Friday edition of the Angela Ray Show. As always. I want to remind you of Ray of Motivation number 54. Cleaning a mirror does not change the person who is reflected in it. Until next time, I encourage you to go out and be the change. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.